Hey gamers! Welcome to twitch.tv slash John Dungeon Master, featuring friend of the stream, friend of a friend, it's Alden! Hello. Hi Alden. Hi. How are you doing? Oh, I know, you know, I'm existing. I'm better now that the holidays are over and I hate the holidays. Yeah, I do too. I think November through February are the worst months of the year. Mm-hmm. God, they're awful. But we're not here to <laughs> talk about the holidays. We're here to make enemies today, <laughs> Alden. I've got a whole YouTube list here that if you're watching the stream, you can just see all these fires and Among Uses and... Oh, look at this. It's just scandals. We got 143,000 of some legal guy, the rules lawyer, talking about it. And then he takes a part of the leaked document out of context and just puts it on a thumbnail. So I'm, I'm thinking that we're going to make an easy 6K views on YouTube once we upload this. Uh, as we go one by one shit-talking all these people for being fear-mongering dumb... Dummies! They're just dumb-dumbs, Alden. Are you excited? I, I am, John. God, so am I. I love watching you poke the bear. God, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have so much fun here in a moment. Uh, Temer says, take it off. Well, why don't oh, no. we take off and go ahead and talk about what's been going on. So apparently, Gizmodo got a leaked document of the new and improved open game license that Wizards of the Coast has not even published yet. Um, and that has sort of kick-started and created a clusterfuck of React people on YouTube who looked at it, got their own copy, went through it, and started sniping comments trying to get as many people to watch their videos as possible. So, are we correcting the, you know, record here? Probably not. Maybe we're just on the anti-jerk wave, as it's known, where we're gonna just jerk off into Wizards of the Coast, open mouth, waiting for the White Knight Paladin Defender, John Dungeon Master, to show up with his basic reading comprehension and explain <laughs> the situation of what's going on. Now, guys, I'm not a lawyer. Alden, you can attest to this. I'm not a lawyer. No. Right? God, I hope not. John makes frivolous accusations constantly that have nothing to do with what the God, laws actually mean. I love making accusations, which is why I'm so mad that these guys <laughs> beat me to it. I wanted to be the one to accuse Wizards of the Coast for torpedoing their reputation and destroying their community. When, in fact, they're trying to protect their community as well as their creators. Uh, surprise, but Wizards of the Coast, a very progressive company, does not actually want to abuse their creators who make their game and company <laughs> and livelihood a reality. So why don't we go over it? Um, so I'm not actually sure if I can show the open game license itself. I do... You know what? I'm gonna put it on the Google thing, just to show that I have it. All right, there we go. Uh, I'm just gonna scroll down through it real quick, um, just to show like, hey guys, it's 15 pages. Most of it is dense legalese, but it's also incredibly simple once you understand basic terminology and you don't lose your goddamn mind looking for things to take out of context. Uh, so, doing a quick scroll through, it's the one everyone has. This was brought to us by another friend of a stream who I will not tell the identity <laughs> of because he does not deserve it. You don't deserve the shout out. You know who you are. So, let's get started, shall we? Uh, so, there are essentially three-ish claims that Wizards, uh, or <laughs> the haters, as I'm now going to call them, uh, are claiming. Uh, the first one is that creators are going to get fucked by the new OGL that Wizards of the Coast is putting out. Um, we'll let the viewers decide if that's the case after we go through <laughs> it. <clears throat> Next up, number two, and this one 
you know, I raised my brow at this because this sounded insane to me when I heard it. Of Wizards of the Coast, WotC is their known, now owns anything you put out in relation to Dungeons and Dragons content. It's not the case. They are not doing that at all, at least from my reading of this document. If you make stuff and it is eligible under their non, non-commercial license now, because they've separated the OGL into non-commercial and commercial subsections or two separate documents, uh, your, sh your shit's fine, bro. It's still going to be protected. It's still going to be yours. There's just stipulations to make sure your stuff is not confused with their stuff. What's this discount porno background music? I can change the music. I just want, you know, a little bit something saucy because I'm about to fuck these men, you know? You don't like discount porno music, Temer? Fine. We'll change the discount music. Friend of the stream, Temer. No, keep it. All right. <laughs> Temer is now outvoted. Uh, but I forgot where it went, so... <laughs> I thought Tummer loved porno music. Alright, there we go. Yeah. He, I mean, he was posting porn to our Discord. <laughs> Alright, now that's oh, an no. accusation, which oh, is no. unfair. <laughs> oh. And the third chief complaint, that this OGL is a slap in the face for every customer that has ever purchased a D&D &D novel book published content ever and they are a billion dollar company who only cares about profits now I, I mean intuitively yes because they are in fact a company and i like so many of these guys am an anti-cap socialist nerd who hates money uh, while also doing everything i can to collect as much wealth from everyone as possible so God, I'm mad. I'm just so... I'm livid. Okay. Alden. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually going to send this to you so you can follow along with my Word document. But I do not want you to share this with anyone else or in the Twitch channel. Because... I have no one to share things with. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is not the correct thing. Let me go ahead. I John, did to. you just send me porn? I sure did, bud. Oh no. There we go. That is the document in question. Maybe I'll get banned. Oh man. God, that'd be sick as shit. Now that I am, in theory, sending you a PDF with this leaked Word document that is not fully out yet. Uh, tell me when you have it open, and we're just gonna go oh, it's down. Open. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <coughs> Alrighty. So, on the first couple pages, well, really page and a half, uh, whoever our writer is, I don't know who wrote this, I'm not even sure if it matters who wrote it, uh, or if we're just going to broadband, like, slap them with the hammer that says, Oh, wizards did it! The fucking actual Wizards <laughs> of the Coast himself! <laughs> he wrote this Gary document. Gary Gygax did it. God, I <laughs> the ghost of Gary Gygax, yeah. <laughs> uh, so essentially, the first couple paragraphs are just setting the precedent why they're updating their OGL. As well as, um, one other thing. I'm trying to remember. I'll just reference my fancy Word document here. In the first paragraph, it sets the history of their previous OGL, as well as the company policy regarding their open game license, which was essentially, hey, help us spread the product around. I'm sure the internet won't exist in six years, and YouTube won't take off in ten. Uh, and fucking monkey NFTs won't storm the internet with thousands, if not millions of dollars worth of cryptocurrency uh, being posted up with these little images. <clears throat> yes, John wrote a Word document. Thank you, Tamer. 
Um, in paragraph two, it tells why exactly they're updating the OJL and separating into two halves. So you got on one hand, the non-commercial, which we talked about earlier, and now we have the OGL commercial, which is for people publishing shit. Um, first mention in this uh, leaked document, I wanna call it something else other than just a leaked document because it's just so cringe that we're basing so much stuff on something that has not actually been published. Yeah, by Wizards Commercial of the Coast. only applies to people who make over 750k a year. Yes, it's true. <laughs> uh, so top 1% guys. So not even the grifters on YouTube have to be worried about this. Unironically, they're not going to get Literally hit. Literally almost no one has to worry about this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but we're going to get in, <laughs> we're going to get into it. Alden, and then we're gonna do some react content. We're gonna open some videos. We're gonna pause videos and talk about it. It's gonna be great uh, They also mentioned bad actors in this one and what's curious about this paragraph is they mention bad actors and Funding their competition or major competitors. I believe is the actual turn of phrase They never give any actual examples of who these people are and I'm really curious who these people are who have messed with the OGL so much that it is demanded by Wizards of the Coast to update it now. Uh, but you know what? Protecting an IP, that is the most American thing in the world, and how can you get mad at a company for protecting their IP? Are you saying you hate Nintendo? Those guys... Those guys protect their IP. Games Workshop? All my shitty Warhammer minis off camera? Do I have to hate them now because they protect their IP as well? I guess so. God damn it, Alton. What am I gonna do? <laughs> That's literally everything in America. I can't even go to Kroger and buy Oreos because those fuckers <laughs> own the IP of Oreos. Oh. Uh, in paragraph 3, they begin to explain where the OGL is actually located via hyperlinks that do not in fact exist, because this is a leaked document without any hyperlinks in it. <laughs> and I was really looking forward to clicking some links. I, you know me, my brain let smooth brain, just consumer-addled passion must let me hit links to go look at different websites to view more advertisements. God, I love it. Um, and then we have some frequently asked questions before it actually gets into the uh, document itself with all the legal jargon, as they call it, or legalese. In uh, question one, what is a non-commercial use of SRD content? Um, I can start reading quotes if you want. I'm not sure when exactly the threshold I meet hits where I get banned off Twitch, um, or if I can quote stuff and like talk about those quotes. So, God, I'm just not a lawyer, guys, but boy, do I know how to read. <coughs> ah, what is non-commercial use of SRD content? Quote, if no money, or anything else of value, is changing hands to get access to the things you created using SRD content, that's non-commercial use and is covered, and subject to, the terms of the OGL non-commercial. If any form of payment or income for access to your work is involved, or is specific to a particular work, even if it's just a dollar, it's covered by the OGL commercial. Now, there were some terms in there, which I'm sure we're going to get to, because they don't start defining terms until we're in the <laughs> legal document itself. But, uh, essentially, if you are adding things to the game, and it is clear that they are not originally part of the game, it is going to be under non-commercial. Uh, so long as you do not put a paywall for other people to access it, such as... Patreon subscribers only, or give me $15 on roll 20 and I will give you stat blocks for monsters. Because that would be commercial, because you are producing a product based off their game, which is now being sold, right? 
However, if you are a YouTuber or a Twitch streamer, a content creator, and you're like, hey, if you want to donate me money as like a tipping service, you can totally do that and it will still be non-commercial. Uh, they make several call-outs to that specific case. So I'm fairly certain Critical Role is completely covered in good, and they don't need to worry about that. Maybe for their books, maybe for other stuff that they sell on D&D Beyond, but I'm pretty sure they already have their own custom deals. So this motherfucker, uh, the character sheet on comicbook.com is literally just putting Critical Role. Bobacus, first time chat, let's see it. <laughs> God, I love you having contention. What what is incorrect about my statement, Mr. Underscore? <laughs> Hit me up, Chief. God, I love this. I'm already loving it. <laughs> We're not gonna wait for him. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Alright, examples presenting. Uh presented in the hidden, currently hidden, leaked word document that I have obtained. Uh, crowdfunding is commercial use. So if you are like a YouTuber who puts a book and says like, hey guys, I'm Matt Colville. We're trying to sell followers and strongholds. I don't remember his book. Uh, come to our GoFundMe page and we will release this book once we hit a certain benchmark. That's commercial use. <coughs> Accepting subscriptions or membership fees or Patreon patrons as a condition of accessing your work is also commercial. So, like I said earlier, Patreon subscribers, if you want to pay me $15 a month, I will give you my bullshit. That is considered commercial. However, accepting voluntary donations via any tipping mechanisms or sites where you're providing your content for free regardless of those donations slash tips, is not commercial. I assume this would cover Twitch slash YouTube users. Now, maybe I'm incorrect, and that is not the case, but everything they have said in this Word document points to that being the case as well. Oh, God. That was a mouthful, Alden. Are you still with me? <laughs> I am. Perfect. Oh. I'm not drunk yet. Perfect. God, I hope not. It's only... Oh, it's it's almost six your time. God, the days just slip by for me. Oh, reading <laughs> legal jargon all day. <laughs> Feels good. Ah. <sighs> oh. Bobacus, I'm still waiting to know where I'm incorrect, Chief. Hit me up. Uh, I made a quick He's note. He's to find and read through the document before he can say anything. It's true, right? If he wants that, he can feel free to join the Discord <laughs> and I'll send him the <laughs> fucking leak. <laughs> That's what he wants. Um, so, it, Alden, for my sense of mind, what I did was, while going through the leak, I also had a uh, Word document that I was sort of explaining myself to what I was, uh, like, reading. So yourself. I posed You're explaining questions. to yourself. Yes, exactly. Because <laughs> I have two people in here, apparently. <laughs> Uh, one is um, the man who hates YouTubers, and the other one is the one who hates capitalism. And I'm not sure which one I am right now, because I'm being driven crazy by these fucking fear mongers. <laughs> uh, I made a quick note to myself of, they are clearly targeting people making books, such as YouTube grifters who use the OGL to crowdfund thousands of dollars to release a PDF. GoFundMe shills are blown the fuck out. Uh... Am I correct? Who knows? We're going to find out as we keep on reading. <laughs> question two. God, we're getting back to the questions of their frequently asked questions. What are my options for making D&D related content? If you are going to use the SRD content to make tabletop role-playing games and game supplements on a non-commercial basis, the OGL non-commercial applies. If you are going to use the content we make available for third-party use to make tabletop role-playing games and game supplements on a commercial basis, and only want to use material from the SRD, but not other material, like the Forgotten Realm setting, the OGL commercial has you covered. Ooh, 
If you want to publish work that uses the Forgotten Realms setting or other content not included in the SRD, that's under the Dungeon Masters Guild. I put this one in bold because it seems important to the YouTubers hmm. who are making a shit ton of money uh, talking about this. Quote, if you want to make videos or other content and monetize it via ads, that's going to be covered under the Wizards of the Coast fan content policy. There's already a policy for fan-made content out there, guys. It's already out. This doesn't affect those people who are making videos. Like me. Right now. Isn't that... Isn't that fucking crazy? Another thing about this leaked document is they reference that thing a lot. At least four times, I believe. And it does a lot of heavy lifting for some of them. And I still have not read that. <laughs> at all. I'm not going to read it either, because it's not important. And I'm... Nah, well, I can't say for sure that all of these dumb fucks have read it. But, you know, if they haven't read it, and I'm not going to read it, I think we're on even ground right now, right? <laughs> and I think we can move on forward. <laughs> I mean, the way fear mongers always work is they read the bullet points and they're like, oh. okay, time to start going for the fucking neck and making wild accusations. True. True, 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 true. So okay. no, they probably didn't read it because that takes too much time and effort. It's It took me like an hour. All right. I, it could have taken me like 20 minutes if I didn't write a Word document with it. It's 15 <laughs> pages. I don't know how many words it is. It's actually in quite small font if you're reading it. It's in like font size 11 in Times New Roman. And there's like 15 pages. But there's a lot of spaces because uh, Washington State, the guys where this uh, apparent new OGL is being filed under, uh, is very particular about how their shit is formatted. I'm still not a lawyer. All right, question three. <laughs> what does the OGL commercial mean for me as a small creator? Quote, for most of the community's content creators, those making under $750,000 per year in SRD-based content, the OGL commercial changes very little and is primarily designed to help us simply know you better. I think they're asking us out, Alden. Under the OGL, those creators will need to register their commercial content with us so we know what's out there, tell us a bit about their product and product sales, and start adding a creator product badge to their materials so that everyone in the community knows they are publishing under OGL license from Wizards of the Coast. I think this is a major, can we cover our ass before we get sued into oblivion by the United States government because hmm. we are creating subsidiaries that do not adhere to our legal structure at all that are profiting off our IP. Uh, that might have been a lot to listen to, but essentially, if you're a guy who makes an NFT of Dritz Dyrden, or whatever the fuck, the, <laughs> maybe Tiamat. You get an NFT for all of Tiamat's heads. You now, thanks to the blockchain counting as a revenue source, must file that shit with Wizards of the Coast, who will hopefully put a stop to your scumbaggy bullshit, as well as scams. Because uh, NFTs are scams. Oh, big take. Man, we're just going to aim to piss off as many people as possible today, Alden. Uh, come at me. All right, that was their frequently asked questions. I believe we're now on page two. As we enter paragraph four. <clears throat> Making Dungeons and Dragons is a labor of love for us, but it's also a business. We, like you, want to keep doing what we love and pushing D&D forward. The open game license was always intended to allow the community to help grow D&D and expand it creatively. Creatively? Yeah, creatively. I know how to read. Fuck you. Quit judging me, Pobicus underscore. Um, it wasn't intended to subsidize major competitors especially now that PDF is by far the most common form of distribution. 
Uh, I underlined that sentence in this paragraph because that one seemed quite important. Uh, ultimately, it wasn't because I read the rest of the document and that's like the second of the four times they mention major comp competition or competitors. Uh, I am still insulting you, Tamar, you beautiful man. Ugh. So, moving forward, hugely successful businesses that generate more than $750,000 of annual revenue will also need to share some of that success with us by paying a royalty of 20 to 25% of the qualifying revenue they make in excess of $750,000. Ah. Uh, did you did you understand that, Alden? Do I need to read yeah. that again? So if you make $750,000 off of third-party bullshit that you're using their IP to generate, you're good. But if you make $1 more, you owe them 20 to 25 cents, depending on where you're getting that money from. I think they cut a special deal with crowdfunding websites, or at least the one that I read, uh, where they, uh... it's 20. From what I know, Wizards of the Coast has a uh, deal with, like, Patreon, fucking uh, Kickstarter, whatever the other ones you are. Know, Basically, they get a small percentage of what's made from it. It's true. Isn't that... It's using called their a, fucking game license. I think it's called a, like, custom work deal or contract. I'm not sure what it's actually called. They say it in the leaked document of what you'll need if you don't want to use the OGL. But yes, after that. So, again, we're not talking about YouTube creators who are shilling and creating hate videos on about Dungeons & Dragons. We're talking about the guys who are writing books, modules, campaigns, and selling them to people. How many people are making more than three quarters of a million dollars off that? And the only thing they'd be losing is like, hold on, let me double check this. What is it? Times 0.20? Less than 200 grand of it. <laughs> yeah. No, the 750,000 is good. It's just money after that. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so what? Fucking. If they're making 750 grand off this, they're obviously going to be making more than that. So what, they're paying pennies on the dollar for fucking any extra shit they're already well, making? Well, quarters on the dollar. But we can move forward. If they're I'm just saying, money, we're talking about more. like 0.001% of people who are making stuff. Not even playing the game, but making stuff to sell commercially with Wizards of the Coast products. So I'm not sure who this OGL is even for. It, it has to be, like, the Critical Role guys who... It couldn't be them, right? Because they Aren't are they working so like, closely with the basically employed DDR. by Wizard of the Coast? Exactly! So I don't know who they're targeting with this. And I really want to know. Like, are I'm they so afraid of another company. Critical Role showing up and then just running wild? Alright. I'm sorry. I'm losing it. I'm just... <laughs> I'm... I'm just lost. I don't know where <laughs> this is coming from. <laughs> Paragraph 5 explains how to register commercial content with them. It's through a website. I'm not going to go through all the boring shit of this legal document, because we'll be here for hours. <laughs> Iso, Cobalt Press, and a couple others. Okay, I'm going to take your word for it. Is that like the... Is Paizo the guys who did fucking Pathfinder? Is that what I'm remembering? I know Cobalt Press makes some stuff, but I never have seen anyone use any of it. Yeah. Okay. So Paizo are the PF Pathfinder guys. Excuse me. Thank you, Lol Karan in the chat, you beautiful man. Okay. Paragraph six. Quote. What if I reject your new license? <laughs> <laughs> I love how they did this. And I really love how later in the document, when we get to the not or to the commercial OGL, they start off the bat swinging about lawsuits. <laughs> like they mentioned them immediately. And I, my eyes lit up at that. I'm like, oh, these guys are getting ready for a fucking fight with someone. I love it. <laughs> uh, what if I reject your new license? Quote. 
That's fine. It just means that you cannot earn income from any SRD based D&D content you create on or after January 13th, 2023. Okay. Time out there. Week. Exactly. So this is a leak. This document hasn't come out yet. And in this leaked document, there are many, well, not many, but a few dates to be determined and just spaces meant to be filled in later. Now, I don't know if this was the working date, because in a little while, they're going to contradict this date as well. <laughs> um, so I thought it could have been like 2024, because they're going to reference something here in a moment. Um, but a lot of the, like, fear mongers are like, oh my god, Wizards of the Coast was going to release this, and then they only gave every single creator in the world less than a week to agree to their <laughs> terms. They're scum! Ah. <laughs> I'm like, what if, what like, terms? <laughs> that, that was just, uh, you know placeholder maybe you know th they give like a 30-day notice i don't know how ip w law works but like you can't just say this is in effect now and then not give the party who is now having to sign a contract no notice <laughs> under threat of lawsuit within a minute of like them getting the notice right from what I understand, now, you know, my uncle is a lawyer. I'm not. And that guy, I don't even think he's a copyright lawyer. But when I <laughs> asked him, he's like, no, they got to give you some time. And he didn't tell me how much time. So I don't know. But you can't just drop down a lawsuit onto people without no warning i mean maybe you could maybe i'm stepping over my bounds and americans sue each other all the time for everything but they can't just intuitively that just does not seem right right can you change someone's contract give them less than a week to understand what they're signing and then be like lol you didn't <laughs> You didn't do it, so now we're gonna <laughs> sue the shit out of you. Maybe? Maybe I'm just talking out of my ass, but that just seems fucky if that's the reality I'm living in. Okay. Back to it. Content you create on or after January 13th, 2023, and you will need to either operate under the new LG OGL, non-commercial, or strike a custom direct deal with Wizards of the Coast for your project. Uh, I made a quick note here. This is John Note talking. This is not <laughs> part of their thing. I'm interrupting myself once again. This is what every big company that publishes WotC or Watka or Wizards works already does, such as Roll20. They already have their own direct deal to publish their content. Try hard. Hi, I want to offer promotion for your channel. Uh, you're getting banned right now, mister. See you later, <laughs> doofus. God, it's been so long since I banned bots. I love banning bots. See ya, nerd. Okay. Uh, they already do this. Critical Role, they already made direct deals with Wizards of the Coast. That's how two books were already published and uploaded <laughs> to D&D Beyond the day it was published, guys. This isn't new to them. They probably already had their deals. Back to the quote, but if you want to publish SRD-based content on or after January 13th, 2023, and commercialize it, your only option is to agree to the OGL commercial. Uh, yeah, I just don't know. I, I have to assume that was the working date, and this was in development long ago, at least in December, right? Uh, like, I don't know the exact time it takes for a lawyer to draft up one of these uh they're not are they I, ips i guess they're like i'm forgetting the actual term because i'm not a lawyer uh remember guys i'm not a lawyer and i hate animals and fuck PETA. but <laughs> <laughs> 
God, I'm just trying to tell so many people right now. <laughs> okay, paragraph seven. We're just gonna move on, guys. We're moving on to paragraph seven of this legal document, okay? Uh, leaked, by the way. Leaked document, so not released. It's already all over the internet. It has to be, because it's in my possession, and I'm a nobody. I saw ah. Timer post it, and then I googled it. I found it immediately. You know, we were trying not to say the guy's name, Alden. Which is why we weren't giving him credit for how I got this document. But thank oh, you for saying it know. anyway. <laughs> I didn't know he's the one who gave it to you. Ah, uh, that's why we don't give him credit. Because he didn't give me this at all, I swear. about in chat. Don't delete Temer from the internet. He's a lovely boy. I don't think anyone has the ability to do he such. He did send it with all the nudes that he posted of himself as well. Uh, as long Wait, as... Wait, well, <laughs> I didn't get any of those. That's okay. I deleted them Temer. for myself. Yes. Paragraph 7. Why Wizards is doing all of this bullshit. Quote, A lot has changed since the old OGL was launched... And that means the old license has some unintended applications we need to fix. For example, when we released OGL 1.0a, YouTube apps, blockchain, crowdfunding, and other now everyday technologies and distribution channels didn't really exist in the way they do today. OGL wasn't intended to fund major competitors, and it wasn't intended to allow people to make D&D apps, videos, or anything other than printed or printable materials for use while gaming. However, the people who wrote... Oh, no, that's my... That is my bullshit. I don't need to <laughs> add my stuff to their quote. That's the end of the quote. Uh, no, the end of the quote is, we are updating the OGL in part to make that very clear. Uh, I agree 100% with that. Their OGL was made in like 2003, 2004? And originally, I was like 11 years old back then. It's been hmm. 20 years, guys. Times have moved on. And if they want to defend their IP, they got to defend their IP. You can't just go to a company and be like, hey, you know that cash cow of yours? <laughs> it's public domain now, fucker. Let me take some <laughs> of that, fuckers. Yeah, I, I mean, they have to. Like, can you imagine if Nintendo let Mario slip, or fucking Disney let Mickey Mouse, or every single other entertainment ever created? <laughs> they wouldn't have any of the fucking money they have now. Yeah, true. And, you know, if you're one of the guys who likes Marvel movies, or you like playing D&D, you gotta support the company who's publishing it. At least to some extent, until you really disagree with them. But at that point, you're already trying to, you know, probably stop engaging with their content, hopefully. Otherwise, you're in a really toxic mind space, guys. <laughs> like, how many people hate watch D&D and just make react videos <laughs> based off fear-mongering and sniping quotes out of leaked Word documents, huh, <laughs> guys? Uh, Alden, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just scrolling down through every single one of these dumb Yeah, files. I see it. You betrayed us all! <laughs> 172k <laughs> views, alright, chief. Oh. Uh, moving on. Um, paragraph 8. Additionally, over time, the old OGL incorporated some confusing and even contradictory provisions. I don't think they ever actually bring up the old OGL in this entire thing. They do not do one-to-one -one comparisons, because that's what our job is for. Uh, but I'm not going to do that either, because I don't care about a document that no longer exists. <laughs> uh, or will soon not exist, since it's still technically and you know. Well, I'll just stop that sentence there. <laughs> Quote, it was also written in fairly dense legal language. So while we're updating it to take into account developments since it was last revised and breaking out commercial use into a separate category, we're also simplifying the language and streamlining the provisions so that it's easier to understand and comply with. For even more clarity, we've included comments that should help illustrate what the provisions do, which you can access by clicking the relevant comment links, and those links don't exist. That is for their future document when this is continued. 
Uh, and some of those comments are copy and pasted over from the non-commercial to the commercial. So I was a little confused when reading the non-commercial. Uh, contract, oh, agreement, EULA, whatever you want to call it. Um, but then I'm like, oh, this was a leaked Word document that was not fully published yet, nor, well, it had to have been peer-reviewed, right? But it has not been published yet by Wizards of the Coast. So... With that in mind, I'm like, oh, okay, maybe that's just another placeholder. And I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, because that's what you should do when a company has their new and upcoming legal drafts leaked to the public. <laughs> <laughs> okay. God, maybe I am just a business shill. Is that him? I... Should I do a reality check or... Or am I seeming reasonable right now, Alden? <laughs> I gotta know. Tell me, am I being reasonable or unreasonable right now? Look, I don't understand most of the legal shit, but for what I, from what I do understand, it, this is just a company trying to protect their IP. Mm. It is. Ooh, yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, that People was their opening change. pages. If you go to page uh, three. Well, at the end of page three, it starts with the actual uh, contract stuff, all the written stuff. Why can they just take your stuff? They don't take your stuff. They do not take your stuff. Saying they don't take any of your shit. They do not take your stuff. Whatever, wh whoever you heard that from is a liar and a fraud. Mandalorian eight eight six. They are a fear mongering clown. Uh, and we're gonna get into that. So hold your horses, hold your hats. <laughs> We're going to explain it to you, baby. I promise. All right. We are in the non-commercial <laughs> section of this leaked legal document that Wizards of the Coast has not published. So, let's put the tinfoil away <laughs> and come down with me. The Wise Wizards costs ruining D&D &D with new patch. What? Huh. <laughs> I don't know what that means, because that's not a real sentence. What do you mean, new patch? This we're going to get there. Game. there. It's a board patches. game. No, we're, <laughs> we play World of Warcraft here. Don't you worry, Alton. Okay, non-commercial. Usable. The engine. Oh, fuck. Man, hang on. Yeah, so am I, Mandalorian. I'm reading it right now. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to separate some things to usable D&D content, which is licensed. Then there is not usable D&D content, which is unlicensed. So we now know those two terms, right? So licensed is the SRD or the engine of the game. So it is the D20 rolling advantage. You make an attack roll and add your strength modifier plus your proficiency bonus, right? The very basics. OGL 1.1 is not a big deal. This is super simple stuff. I wish I could show it to you. You know what? Jump in the Discord. I'll link you the leaked document, Mandalorian. I'm not even kidding. I can have you read this in front of yourself in two seconds. <laughs> I promise you. I have this document. I've already given it to multiple people. They're reading it right now. All right, license this, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the engine. This also includes uh, monsters, so like basic monsters that they cannot have IP over, so like a goblin. Guess what, Chief? There's a million goblins. Tolkien would have sued the ever-loving shit out of everyone if Goblin was his, like, pick. And he beat everyone to the punch, right? So orcs, goblins, demons, fiends even, all the basic stuff of the monster manual, the SRD as they call it, which you can you can literally Google SRD monsters and you can look at all that shit right then and there. I'm not even kidding. Even classes, like base classes of fighter all the way down to, you know, wizard. All right, you know, bard, I guess. So not their setting specific stuff, which is under... Unlicensed content, so you do not have access to that. Licensed content, you're good to go. 
Uh, whatever you use and add on to that, as long as you separate it out, either through italics, they give plenty of examples in the leaked document of how you can differentiate your stuff you are adding to the SRD for free without a paywall. And then after you do that, you're good. Just release it. You're fine. Nothing's going to happen to you. But the moment you make Tiamat, which is under their unlicensed stuff, which is called the most famous characters, I believe. No, most famous Dungeons and Dragons, monsters, characters, magic spells, and things relating to various settings used in Dungeons and Dragons official content is under product identity. So if they have the IP on Tiamat, I don't know if they do. I assuming they can't, but maybe Tiamat, the many-headed dragon from hell, maybe they have that specific IP down in Pat, since, you know, Tiamat's like a fucking Babylonian goddess or something. Uh, that shit's unlicensed. Don't fuck with it. <coughs> uh, that is on page three. That is under section two, or section A, in the second provision. Uh, then there's a third provision, which is called your content. So this is the stuff you add, you name, you create. It is your IP, which you are adding onto the SRD. Wow. Isn't that cool that they make a subsection specifically for your shit so that you do not lose it? Oh, God, they're actually helping creators differentiate your magic spells, your items, the new homebrew rules you're adding, such as Gritty Realism 2.0a from <laughs> Neil Patrick Grass or Harrison. I don't know who I stole this from. But either way, that stuff is yours. Uh, and then it goes into section B, which is works covered. Uh, you create for use in, uh, blah, blah. this license only applies to materials you create for use in or as role-playing games and as game supplements and only as printed media and static electronic files such as epubs or pdfs Ooh, that was a sentence it does not allow the distribution of any other form of media and does not apply to the creation of anything else so if you make a word document you turn into a pdf much like what i do and then you send it out to the world, they're not gonna do anything. They, in this OGL, they say they will not do anything. And so long as they are not actively lying to the world, which I'm going <laughs> to assume they're not, I'm still gonna take their word that they're not gonna send the lawyer team after me, because I think it would be a cool idea to have Long Rest take seven narrative days instead of <laughs> one. Uh, it then defines what these are even more. They really want you to know that this stuff is separated and you need to separate it as well. Uh, they also add a provision that after you have made your uh, works, if it is under non-commercial stuff and you are publishing it to everyone, you have to make an agreement with anyone else who wants to use your stuff and change that as well because it's what you're doing to them why shouldn't like what get it together it's free stuff baby anyone can steal my idea for the eight-legged horse yeah i'm sorry i didn't mean to fully talk over you now so after telling you that you have the rights to your own characters, classes, settings, spells, items, new rules, and other creations that you have crafted, they make a strange comment. And this is where I was like, oh, maybe these React Andes here on YouTube were onto something. Maybe I'm making an ass of myself. But then I read it, and I realized they're still grifters. And they're lying to you. Ah. Uh. You guys ready to get confused <laughs> here's the comment to be clear ogl non-commercial only allows for creation of role-playing games and supplements in printed media and static electronic file formats it does not allow for anything else including but not limited to things like videos virtual tabletops or vtt campaigns Computer games, novels, apps, graphic novels, music, songs, dances, and pantomimes. So, 
for most of these, I understand, right? Uh, let me finish the quote. You may engage in these activities only to the extent allowed under the Wizards of the Coast fan content policy. Hey, remember that? We made a shout out about it earlier <laughs> in this video, guys. <laughs> or, you know, you can make a separate agreement between you and us, which is their terms for you, the guy who's trying to make something, and us, the Wizard of the Coast. Uh, Mandalorian, you're a haterade, bro. You need to drink some Gatorade, get some electrolytes in your brain, because you're acting like a brainlet right now. Because so far, they're allowing a lot of shit in leeway and are being the opposite of greedy. But it's okay. You can go back to the start of this video where you can watch me ramble and rant and realize, oh, maybe I am a dumb fucky-wucky who hasn't read the leaked 1.1 OGL non-commercial use of the new Wizards of the Coast IP. Woo! Moving on. Uh, so I was confused, right? Like, how in the fuck are they going to police my virtual tabletop? Are they going to sit in and watch the game? Are they going to fucking take the times out of their days to give two shits about what some random schmuck is doing on their Roll20 game? Yeah, I know. I don't, I don't know, because from what I understand, from what I've read so far, is that they are only targeting people who are publishing content of their own game and selling it on marketplaces, and they don't actually care what you, the average person, are doing at all, because who gives a shit about you? They don't. They don't care if you want to make your own paladin subclass. They want to see that when you decide to publish your paladin subclass, if you make more than $750,000, you give them some money back, motherfucker. They just want credit where credit is due when you make too much money. I know, yeah. Uh, they also have examples of, like... Uh, I don't know the exact page, but they make, like, a axe-throwing guy who, like... It's almost like a fifth grade math problem of like when this would apply and when you need to become a commercially licensed person. Um, it's weird. It's very like whatever. And then I read that and on like page 11, I think, once they're done with the non-com or the non-commercial and they go into it. The comment I just read, the long wind of, like, VTTs, dances, pantomimes, that is copy and pasted again, but the word non is taken out. <laughs> and it's now the commercial. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. OGL commercial is what it says. Uh, I copy and pasted that shit in this document, too. So, honestly, this could also just be a placeholder. Now, or maybe they're just, like, really trying to, like, confuse people. I don't know. Um, all right, we're done with that comment. We're going down. This fan content policy is doing a lot of heavy lifting, as I said earlier, but again, uh, all these grifters on YouTube don't read it, so neither am I. Uh, the four stipulations to be under OGL non-com, or non-commercial. One, it qualifies as a covered works as defined in section 1B. Unclear if this means, uh, well, never mind, that's my note. Uh, I was kind of unclear about the terminology there because there's a lot of B sections in their non-commercial, and I'm unsure if they mean like the usable D&D content or the licensed content, which is their first I, or the I content covered and not. So I assume it's that one, where it just tells you like, hey, what works are covered and protected under this and what shit is yours. Uh, very simple, basic stuff. Uh, number two, again, before stipulations to be under OGL non-com, it contains both license content, so the SRD mechanics, and your content, so the stuff you add, not the unlicensed stuff. So again, not setting specific, not Theros, not Wild Mount, not, uh, what's the one with Artificers and Warforged? Er er Eberron? Yeah. Can't do that Eberron. shit. But if you're just doing the base game, you're still good. Hmm. Oh, it does not contain unlicensed content. Third stipulation. We just went over that. Do I need to do it again? I don't think so. 
And finally, the fourth big stipulation, number four, and I think where everyone's losing their minds. Maybe, maybe not. It contains the text of this OGL, non-commercial, within the body of the work. So you need a disclaimer to be like, hey, much like how fair use on YouTube and people put that on their animated music videos are like, you can't sue me, Universal, for using your music while I put it against my Naruto fight with Sasuke of Linkin Park or... <laughs> well, system of a down, come on, guys. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's, that's the four things. And you're good, as long as... You're protected. You're good. That's it. Isn't that super simple? <laughs> Don't use our setting specific shit. Use the SRD, which you're assumedly already doing, and make your own stuff, guys. You know, and, you know, if you could be so kind as to alert everyone that you're not creating backward shit, nor is there a paywall that you have to pay to, you know, uh, get through it. I understood maybe two words from that sentence. Tamer, get it together. <laughs> Don't steal Theros, Wildmount, Eberron, and then make your own shit with the DND SRD. Their engine, their basic stuff, and you're good. You're Gucci. It's super simple. And, you know, don't make money by selling it, right? Because then you'd be under commercial, which we're about to get to. <clears throat> Here's the comment. This comment gets, I think, copy-pasted another time, but maybe more. As we said in the intro, commercial distribution is any distribution you get paid for in any form. Money, crypto, barter, your brother doing your chores for a week, whatever. It does not include donations people give you to support your work as long as they can have access to your work for free if they choose to, and you inform them of that in a clear and obvious way. You get on YouTube, you say, I made this thing, you can use it too, but if you want to give me a tip for making stuff, I can accept it with no strings attached, because that's not revenue, that's a donation. Isn't that, isn't that simple? Haven't <laughs> we just saved all of YouTube creators for everything, guys? I think we have. I think we're heroes, Alden. I think <laughs> with basic reading comprehension, we've done it. We have done it. We've saved Wizards of the Coast. I am their shining knight, <laughs> but we're not done. Do you know what's coming next? Called a commercial license? Uh, no, but soon. <laughs> uh, I swear, we're almost at the commercial license. Uh, so, ownership. You agree that we own copyright, trademark, and patent rights, if any, in the licensed content, engine and PHP, and the unlicensed content, brand shit, like settings and characters. We reserve all rights not expressly given to you through this agreement. You agree to include any copyright or other rights notices, rights notices included with the licensed content in your licensed works, trademark your shit, and you may not impose any addition, uh, additional, different, or inconsistent terms or conditions with respect to the licensed content in any license you grant to any licensed work. Don't try to weasel shit into anything you signed or send back to us legally is what that roughly translates to. <laughs> so, did you ever hear about the guy who, like, uh, took a agreement between he and his bank where they just pay him money, uh, but he did it in such a way through trickery that he changed the font size and, you know, gave him a 30-day way of, like, getting a refund, but he, you know, made, like, $150,000 off of doing this? No, but... Okay, well, that happened in real life. It's a famous story where some guy used contract law and just legitimate trickery. Uh, yeah, it's totally legal, for sure. Uh, there the Fox 64. Oh, the Red Fox, not there the Fox. <laughs> I misread your name. 
Uh, yeah, that is totally legal. But also, they don't want that shit to happen. So they're going to put a provision in their Word document and be like, hey, don't do that shit to us. Thanks, LOL. Or you will violate the terms and conditions of this OGL. What, Tamar? What do you want? John, impressive <laughs> misread. What, I'm, what did I misread? Come here, Mr. Lawyer. You want to fight about it? Just kidding. I know you're not a lawyer, Tamar. You know I love you. Oh, I'm still waiting to see what I fucked up because, you know, I have basic reading comprehension and I'm, <laughs> oh, they're D Fox 64. That is how his name is pronounced. Got it. All right. He was not actually contending with any of my readings of this legal document that was leaked, uh, not by Wizards of the Coast. Oh, so yeah, trademark your shit. Don't do some squirrely stuff in their contracts, and you're good. You're still good. Don't be a bad actor. Oh, wow. God, I <laughs> love it when there's a legal demand that I must follow not to be a bad actor in a business setting, right? God, it's, it's such a strange and novel thing that only Wizards of the Coast has done, right? <laughs> All right. Identification of licensed content. You must, you must, must, must identify in your licensed works which content is licensed content, their stuff, and which content is your content, your stuff, in a way that allows the reader of your licensed work, so the combination of their stuff and your stuff is now your licensed work, to understand the distinction without checking any other document. So... Don't hide away a disclaimer in a fully separate thing that says, wow, you know, God damn it! I got distracted by Twitch chat. Uh, <laughs> be blatant. Tell people what is your stuff. Be like, hey, I did not create the D20 system, but I'm adding this new mechanic. Red boxes are my work. Blue boxes are Wizards of the Coast content. The Red Fox 64 is a Giga Chad who understands. What the hell? I need more of him in my life, guys. Okay. Comments. This lets you help distinguish that is Wizards of the Coast own and what you're offering to the world. The following sections order you to as you are using the OGL to create stuff that other players can do the same to your shit as well. Uh, that is on, like, page seven, six, I don't know. Uh, here's a, another flashy comment, or are we doing the comment? <clears throat> Does that mean the other players can OGL your work in this OGL? Yes, exactly. Since you are creating free stuff and you're definitely not profiting on it because it's a non-commercial agreement, other people can similarly use your stuff if you have thrown it out to the world. So if you are from, like, the Regal Goblins uh, Discord with the Neil Dungeon Master guy, and you see that he has this cool world called Arcadia, you can take his world, and he can't do anything to stop you because you're running your own private stuff. You want to add on to it. He does not own that copyright uh, or... Well, it's different for him because he's not even doing like 5e. He's doing his own wacky bullshit anyway. But in essence, if I make a setting like called the Clovisa campaign or whatever, it's free content. Anyone can take it. And I cannot sue you for taking my world, recreating my maps and running your own games. That'd be insane. Like, one, how could I even find that? And two, if I do find it, now I legally can't pursue you, which in essence, should be a good thing uh, and can stop, like, toxic lawsuit hunting. I'm still wondering, though, what was the precedent to get <laughs> this added to the contract? You know? Like, someone had to have done this or they are very... They have future sight or something and they're just terrified of what is going to occur. Uh, my problem is the donation. I'm not sure 
what you mean? What if John DM uses my work and gets like 500 times more donations? Well, uh, honestly, I guess that'd be tough shit um, category because it's a donation and they're not using your work or selling your work, right? So if they recreate it, So that's my problem. Well, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It's a good problem to have. Big influence taking it and profiting off of it. See, that's the thing. Donations are not considered gross annual revenue, uh, at least by Wizards of the Coast standards, which is all I can talk to right now because I am not ready to have a meta debate about our donations yeah. revenue. Uh, so long as they are not selling your work via a book or a PDF or some sort of virtual tabletop module, then they can steal your shit and jerk off on it and then resell it, well, present it in such a way to get your stuff uh, or to make money off of your stuff. Make money quotations. That Those quotes are doing some heavy lifting for me, but I had <laughs> to add them. <laughs> uh, the Red Fox 64, by the way, this guy, oh, what a good actor actually bringing up some stuff to engage with this this guys is the anti whatever the fuck these people are these brainlets these fear mongers okay you guys ready to move on you guys ready uh. <sighs> they have one last comment before we go into the 1.1 commercial document comments we're giving you a license, not agreeing to take on potential liability when we do so. To be honest, we're not really sure what we could do while making Dungeons & Dragons content available to you that could ever be considered grossly negligent, but our lawyers say we need to include that last clause under Washington law, so it goes. Uh... That's their last comment. They had to have a little disclaimer that says, if you fuck around and uh, we get sued somehow, or we create a way to get sued, we're not going to accept that, and that's on you, Chief. Um, I This goes to... Uh, I'm trying to find the exact words, but I made a little comment, uh, or a note to myself to talk about. Uh, specifically around their termination clauses, which I think a lot of these guys, especially this dude, the rules lawyer, as you can see, well, maybe you can't see, hang on. Ah, oh, we can modify or terminate this agreement for any reason whatsoever. Hey, rules lawyer, no fucking shit, dude. All companies can do that. It's in every single EULA. Have you never played World of Warcraft or any subscription-based game? If you do stuff that go... <laughs> Have you ever been on Twitter, dude? <laughs> like, they can kick you off whenever they want. It is a privilege. A service, sometimes. And if you do stuff they don't like, they can kick you off. It's just what businesses do. That is America's... It's just America, dude. Quit being anti-American, the rules lawyer. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, but I was curious about, like, what could I do specifically to get myself onto this thing and then terminate it from as a free content creator, right? And they give some examples of extreme racism, homophobia, transphobia, uh... I'm trying to find the actual list, but it's <laughs> buried. It's buried under all of this legalese, guys. But I'm just wondering, like, maybe I go to Germany and I create a... It's on page six. Thank you, the Red Panda. Or Red Fox, excuse me. Uh, like, do I need to go to Germany and make, like, Nazi frog race and then public, like, publish that on D&D &D Beyond? Uh, ban new TSR from using their stuff. Interesting. Oh, xenophobia, I think. We may terminate the agreement immediately. You infringe upon or misuse any of our IP, violate any law in relation to your activities under this agreement, or if we determine in our sole discretion that you have violated section 
8 point G or 8 point H. To be clear, we have the sole right to decide what conduct violates sections. Blah. And you covenant and agree that you will not contest any such determination via any suit or other legal actions. So if you make your racist frogs and you try to push that as a document on their service, they can kick you off. I'm pretty sure they could have done that already. Uh, just, I guess they're making it clear and some of these dudes don't like that. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. And the comment that I read earlier about, uh, I can do what I want to you if you're being stupid as hell. Uh, hey man, I, I think Wizards of the Coast is racist as fuck whenever they started doing <laughs> their grung slaving bullshit. Um, but they want to distance themselves from that and good on them. Good on them! They're growing. We should not lambast them for progress and growth, right? Ugh. You guys still good with the porno music? We can change it up if you guys want. I do some trumpets. But the porno music fits so well. I know, right? Okay. Okay. Now we have some, like, Persona 4 music going on. Got some trumpets going. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on just a little bit. Uh, there's a lot more stipulation stuff in their EULA. I'm not going to read every single one because it looked like pretty standard stuff of, like, hey, you don't own our shit. Hey, if you uh, try to sue us, this is our going to be our reaction. Overall, I think my only comment about this is vehicles had this with aftermarket parts way back in the day, avoided warranties, etc., etc. Uh, true? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm so sorry. I'm ignorant. I'm just using my basic reading comprehension to dunk on some people. <laughs> uh... Uh, commercial only allows for creation of role-playing games and supplements in printed media. I think we already read this. Yeah, we've already read that, so we're going to skip that. Uh, solves the mystery. They can terminate it. Don't be a dickhead. Make something cool. Now it's time to see what happens when we actually try to sell something. Uh, in the commercial contract, there is... The first couple sentences is essentially just how to identify your shit versus Wizards of the Coast stuff already published. Uh, literal repeat from the non-commercial section as well. Like, quite literally, it's copy and pasted. Um, and then they separate their tiers of people. Like, who is making money and what do you need to do for us if you are making money off of our IP? Uh, and there's three tiers. There is the initiate tier. Uh, so if you have registered through their website, they list how to do all that stuff if you want to sell a product through D&D Beyond. Uh, how to do that. <clears throat> their tiers are a big fucking meme. Um, it's, it's such a clown thing. But I guess I understand it in a way of literally you are making money... Oh, Rumble Roar, welcome. Uh, like, do they go by tax returns? I don't know, honestly, the Red Fox, but this is their demands. If you are in the initiate tier, you have to have had at least one registered licensed work, but you have not generated 50,000 USD in total gross revenue in the given year. So, if you make $49,999 off whatever thing you are pushing on their marketplace in a year, you don't need to tell them anything. Like, at all. That's okay. I understand that. I don't know who does that, but I'm super interested in seeing who does that. Then there's the next tier, called the Intermediate Tier, where you are making between $50,000, but less than $750,000 in a given year. So, okay, now we have some products out there which is making quite a bit of money on their website using their IP. And you still don't owe them any money. 
at all. You do not owe Wizards of the Coast any money between $50,000 to $750,000. And then, uh, the expert tier, where you are making over $750,000, or three quarters of a million dollars. Once you are making over that. So, I don't... I'm sure there are five creators, or at least as creators in the world, that I can count on my hand who's doing this stuff. Paizo is making more for sure, uh, definitely. But I don't know if Paizo you, would even fall under this. Are, are Paizo still making D&D merchandise, or are they full into Pathfinder? I I'm mean, Pathfinder sure. is literally just based off of D&D. <laughs> Fuck, what edition? Is it 2.5? Pathfinder uses the OGL. I, I thought they separated that after, like, uh, 3 point... Yeah, I know 3.5, 3.5, yeah. Starfinder, yeah, that's just Pathfinder in space. I didn't think they used the uh, 5.1 SRD engine, though. And I'm fairly but certain still, that... But it's still part of, like, their fucking IP, right? No. No, it's not? No. This only involves 5.1. I'm... Maybe I forgot to add that. Uh, to this Word document that I'm reading from. But it explicitly calls out uh, under... Give me one second and I'll actually do it. Um, so if you go to page three, uh, under section A, or section A, and the first thing, or I, usable D&D content, quote, licensed content. This is Dungeons & Dragons oh, yeah. content that is included in the SRD version 5.1. I assume that means 5th edition. So, if Paizo is using 5th edition stuff, or future stuff that they make, I can see that happening, but I was under the impression that Pathfinder was in its 2nd edition and not using their engine anymore. They had their own system. Um, I could be wrong. I don't know anything about Pathfinder. Uh, but as long as it is not under the SRD version 5.1, it should still be good. Because uh, this isn't a retroactive OGL, right? So if you're using like 3.5 or 2nd edition, like ad and D, I I don't think this covers that. So I think like the Regal Goblins channel is still going to be fine no matter what. Um... I should have put that in here in my thing. I read it as we are updating the SRD to 5.1, so it falls under this. It could. Um, mm. I assume it's not, though, because they don't explicitly say that anywhere. Where they're not like. I honestly think, like, the advanced Dungeons and Dragons rules are public domain now, and anyone can use them. I. I have to imagine that is the case. If that game is over 40 years old now from the 1980s, from SRD. <laughs> they do explain SRD, but... The D20 system logo or trademark of Wizards, and we are used accordingly. Even 2 Point Neil. I don't think 2 Point... I think 2 Point Neil's fine. Because uh, Neil doesn't use Thacko anymore, or any of, like, the main mechanics. He's updated it all to... All right, I don't want to get distracted with Neil Patrick Harris or whatever the fuck his name is. Neil Patrick Harris. I don't think... The, I do not believe Wizards of the Coast can take the D20. I, that is impossible to imagine where they own that dice. Like, that's like saying the Warhammer guys own the d100 system there's no way in hell right so maybe the logo for sure of like the d20 face with the dragon you know showing up but i'm not sure about that i'm getting super way off topic by the way i still want to focus <laughs> on the commercial license alden come on slap me hit me get me can't, you're in text i mean it's fine you can talk to me Okay, let's go on to the comments of why the tiers exist. For one thing, it's Dungeons and & Dragons and even our lawyers play. It's possible 
We're not actually sure how to design something without some form of leveling up. Now, I took that quote, and I just read it to you, and I have no fucking clue what it means. Sorry, but I copy and pasted the entire comment, and that is the sentence. Uh, moving on. But also, we're trying to minimize the burden on our creators as much as possible. By the way, guys, this is a leaked Word document from Wizards of the Coast. They did not publish this. <laughs> Just a reminder, by the way. Uh, but also, we're trying to minimize the burden on our creators as much as possible. As you'll see below, if you're in the initiate tier, all we need from you is some basic information about what you've created and are offering for sale. So, sub $50,000, they just want to know what product you're selling. Then we move on to the next tier, the intermediate tier. So, $50,000 to $750,000. Once you work your way to the intermediate tier, we'll ask you to provide annual financial reporting so we can see whether royalties are due. So, once you're there, yeah, you might need to pay royalties if you go over $750,000. But if you're below that, big thumbs up, Chief. You're still good. You just now need to make financial reports, which hopefully if you're making that much money annually based on D&D &D fucking books, <laughs> you can hire a guy to do that for you. Uh, reach an expert tier means that you will pay us royalties on your revenue over $750,000. If you're doing incredibly well, you might level up into a custom license, much like the Critical Role guys, the Roll20 guys, all the dudes who already have their own custom direct agreements with Wizards of the Coast. So, what do we learn? If you make over $750,000, you now need to pay based on your, I think, over that benchmark. They make a direct example. How many people do you actually think are making more than that off of directly published works? It's not anyone on YouTube who are making comment videos. So, again, all these people who are telling you to be afraid that Wizards of the Coast is out for your money... They aren't out for your money, Chief. They're not after the little guy. They're after the big dudes. That's who they want. All right? And honestly, they should be going for them. If you like Dungeons & Dragons, they should be defending their IP from companies who are stealing their product. Maybe Dude, that's a moral statement. If actually started getting that money, imagine how much better the fucking later editions will actually be. Uh, probably not, because uh, we hate Dungeons and Dragons here, Alden. <laughs> oh, shit, fuck. But we I hate these that. guys more. We hate all, right, all these the guys. Story. You see, so this guy, this guy right here that I'm showing, greed, lies, and massive D&D drama, some motherfucker in my Discord sent me this guy's stupid video, and we're going to react to it, because I fucking hate this guy now. <laughs> Look at his dumbass, big-ass beard. He has a better beard than me, and he's wearing a beanie indoors behind a green screen. All I got is a black curtain and whatever the fuck this is. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> that used to be our death counter. Oh, yeah. Now it's zero. <laughs> oh, we used no to use it after a while because people kept dying too much. <laughs> it's true. Ah. Uh, okay. It's pretty easy to understand. If you make more than $750,000 a year based off shit you're selling in book format, you gotta pay him a royalty. Okay, who cares? <laughs> Section 7, Registration and Reporting. Section A, Register your product, dumb fuck. Section B, Report your shit after you make 50000 USD in gross revenue for a particular year on products covered by the OGL commercial. Uh, here's section 7, royalties. If and only if you are generating a significant amount of money, parentheses, over 750000 per year across all licensed works from your licensed works, the revenue you make from your licensed works in excess of $750,000 in a single calendar year is considered qualifying revenue 
and you are responsible for paying us 20 or 25% of that qualifying revenue as explained in section uh, 9B.2. Fuck me, that was a sentence, guys. That was a 50-word sentence right there. But again, if you are making over $750,000 a year based on licensed works, based off their system, they have, well, they don't have to, you owe them a royalty of 20 to 25% based off every dollar you make after $750,000. This does not affect the little guy. It just doesn't. It does not affect YouTube content creators, small Twitch streamers. It doesn't affect guys running their own game for $15 a session. It doesn't do any of that. So I'm wondering, where in the fuck did these guys come from who made a bunch of stuff in React content other than just to Fearmonger? <laughs> Doesn't this apply to only PDFs and EPUBs, as well as physical books, but yes. That's true of the Red Fox. It only applies to PDFs, EPUBs, and uh, they have some other stipulations that if you're doing some like weird stuff, like trying to copyright dances and stuff from their games, I don't even think D&D has any dances or pantomimes. Yeah, they that own. one was a weird addition. Probably I, just TikTok shit. I honestly think that was like from the Washington State stuff of like, we need a bunch of disclaimers because Washington State demands us for IP law. That's intuition talking. I don't know if that's the case, but I would love to see D&D &D trademark dances. <laughs> Do those exist? If someone has those, we will watch them on stream right now. But I don't think they do. Uh, my note to the whole revenue thing of, wow, who gives a fuck? Because who, who gives a fuck? Who cares? Uh, comment. Your entire campaign, including stretch goals, is considered... One product for the purposes of royalty threshold. I think this is for crowdfunding. If your campaign raises $750,000 and $1, so 750000 plus $1 or more, you pay royalties on that last dollar because the product you are crowdfunding exceeds the $750,000 revenue threshold. That said, revenue for any add-on material that backers separately purchase is not considered qualifying revenue unless the add-on is also a licensed work. Some examples may help make this clearer. I did not put any of those examples because how many of these YouTube reactors are creating crowdfunded projects with extra things attached to them? I don't think it's that much. I just don't. Probably not. I, d I don't know any <laughs> at all. Hmm. In a calendar year, yes. <clears throat> so, if you're making under that every year, you're still good. When it funds or when it ships? Uh, no idea. I think it's a set date. They mentioned March 31st a few times in the Word document. I'm assuming then... So if you make $750,000 from March 31st of 2023 to 2024, I still think you're good. And if you make $1 more, you're going to owe 20 to 25 cents. Graduating licensing? Dip into money above only? Uh, can you be a little bit more clear in that question, Tamir? I can wait. <sighs> All right. Uh, why don't we take a break, and then we're going to react to some of these guys. <laughs> Ah, uh, we're gonna make some enemies today, friends. I'm excited. We'll be right back. Woo!
Hey guys, we're back. Oh, my greasy ass hair. Let's brush it to the side. We had some questions from the chat, and by some I mean a comment and then a question. Graduated doesn't mean take lower tiered earnings. They do not take lower tiered earnings if they're uh, unless they are actively lying. Uh, if they are actively lying through this word document. <laughs> I mean, fuck, right? I, nothing <laughs> I can do at that point. Uh, only the money that clears above the set amount. Yes, Temer. So, like, if a campaign raised five mil, they say you graduated. So if you turn your campaign into a book that can be purchased, and that, and people purchase that book enough where they, you make over $750,000, then you will be eligible to... Owe them money, I guess. Owe them 20, 20 to 25% past the 750. Yeah. Which, in hindsight, isn't probably much for someone making that much fucking money. Probably not. Uh, but as Rumble Roar says, we eat the rich here. Uh, who's ready to do some React content unless we got more questions we want to do? Uh, and I can't wait to get some of these guys to DMCA this video once it comes out. Oh, calling it now. They can't. They posted it on YouTube. It's not copyright after that. I, j I just want to get dmca <laughs> We've been trying for two years, John. True. I need and nothing the sticks. Attention. Even when I tried getting you a Nike sponsorship and Sonic. Good. Okay. I think we're ready. Now, Alden, I don't know if you're going to listen to it through the stream uh, or if you want me to link you the video separately, but I can do both if you want, and then we can watch it together. So we're going to start with this piece of shit. Yeah, just link me the video. Okay. So Let me go ahead and link you the video. Guys, welcome to John Dungeon Master's first React content where we mock people, make fun of people, <laughs> and uh, make fun of them as well. <laughs> Which is all essentially the same thing, but uh, fuck this guy. He looks silly, and I hate his hat. Mm. <laughs> Show us what's Just beyond that hat. Who wears hats indoors, guys? <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing we're going to get. Um. Okay, you know, this may be the only one we do, since this video is getting a little long and ranting, but eh, who knows? We may do another. Uh, yes, this is indeed the video that one Mr. Brood sent me before he put on his tinfoil hat and lost his mind. So, in three, two... One, starting. We are one week into 2023, and Wizards of the Coast are already going for the ultra any percent speed run of destroying their own company as quickly as possible. I Unless you fell into effects. a coma on December 23rd and you've mm -hmm. only just woke up, you have heard about the insane drama unfolding around Wizards of the Coast trying to update the open gaming license. So, pausing. This is all manufactured drama. <laughs> Again, the leak, someone else did that, and uh, this Gizmodo article is the main thing. Uh, and I do not want to go through this entire article because I don't respect people who do articles. I think they are hacks as well. Uh, so, in three, two, one. Or the OG app. This is basically a document that allows the public to create content using an abstracted, watered-down version of the D&D rules. Every D&D fan thing you've seen uses this reference. Uh, my magazine, the DM Secret Weapon on Patreon. Did he Every say his D &D magazine? Do what? Did he say his magazine? Uh, I assume so. I can go mm. back. No, no, I'm pretty sure he said his magazine, which, uh... Every D and D fan thing you've seen uses makes this sense reference. now. Uh, my magazine, the DM. Either said mine, or John, a legitimate writer DM hates articles. Every D and D fan. Every
every D&D Kickstarter, right. critical role stuff, Pathfinder, even massive video games like the Knights of the Old Republic. Yes, those games used the open gaming license. This was amazing for WotC and D&D because it made their system the system that everyone uses. Okay, so a key part of this thing- So, pausing again. It does mention video games in the terms of service and stuff mm -hmm. you do. But every single one of those companies did not just take the engine and be like, LOL, if you, honestly, I may just load up Baldur's Gate 3 and see if there right. is a Wizards of the Coast marker on any one of these games. If they have Hasbro or some other thing of who owns the rights, chances are they have had some sort of communication with the company wizards of the coast you don't just put the, the brand of someone else's company on your game without telling them first or cutting some sort of deal that allows you to do this there's i know for a fact Baldur's gate 3 like straightforward is by like w partially by wizards of the coast like they have the agreement with them yeah Ugh. oh well all right we're starting in three two one Thing was the promise that this OGL would last forever. You could make your content now and you wouldn't be screwed over later by Wizards of the Coast trying to change their mind. In a Q&A from 2001, which WotC have since taken down because apparently they don't know that web archives are a thing, so. Wizards of the Coast said, even if Wizards made a change to the OGL you disagreed with, you could continue to use an earlier acceptable version at your option. In other words, Oh. There's no reason for wizards to ever make a change that the community of the people using the open gaming license Three, would object to two. because the community would just ignore the change anyway. So here's Okay. <laughs> so imagine how much of a brainlit take that was of we released a change for an OGL 20 years ago and that is what it will be forever. <laughs> Can you imagine any company doing that ever? There's <laughs> no way, right? Like, in perpetuity, GURPS, is the company who made GURPS even around anymore? I don't even fucking know what GURPS is. Generic universal role playing system. I'd love if. to see it. I I am waiting for it. Feel free to link it in the chat, the Red Fox. Mm. Timber. Oh my god. <sighs> Yeah, Temmer, fuck you. 2004. Just the took the GURP system and never edition. looked back. True. Um, look, if a company sets out a thing and then they want to change it, they're going to do it. Just because some guy who initially wrote that says it's going to last for, until I die or until after I die forever and ever and ever... That's not a legally binding thing. Ever. That's just... I don't know. A very innocent and naive way to look at the world. <laughs> Alright. Let's go back into it. Five or three, two, one. Here comes the kick in the balls. Wizards of the Coast have decided to fuck that right off and attempt to completely screw over every content creator. They are attempting to revoke the old... So every content creator, guys. Every content creator is getting fucked by this new OGL. Every single one, huh? Yeah. I, it's, it's this not, isn't even we, true. It's not true, no. <laughs> it's not true not at all. Not everything. <laughs> all right. Two, one. Old license and replace it with a new one, which is just so cartoonishly evil and horrible that when I saw evil. a leak of it in December, I didn't <laughs> want to publish a video about it because I knew you wouldn't believe me. 
But now the leak's out there, so we can all see just how greedy no, and vicious like, Wizards he's of the just Coast are. Greedy and vicious. vicious. There's a lot in here, but I'm going to give you the cliff notes greedy of and basically vicious. what yeah, they are I guess trying so, to do. Huh? All right, what? hang on. We're now doing his notes compared to our notes after reading the entire thing. I said it earlier. They just look at bullet points and don't fucking read further into anything else. It's true. Uh, but let's go and talk about each and every one of his points, because <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> Why not? Let's engage with them. That's what we're doing. Wizards get the right <laughs> to use any content that anyone makes for any reason and pay zero royalties. So pay zero royalties on your content, use your content whenever they want, and you get nothing. Where the fuck was that stated anywhere in this document? I have not seen anything in this entire leak that says you, you do not own your stuff anymore. In fact, they make clear and explicit things telling you to make sure you differentiate your stuff from their stuff. Multiple times in both OGLs. This is just not true. It's just not true. I, I, I don't know what else to say. It's just a flat out false statement. All right, we're going back to it. In two, one, start. Basically, anything anyone makes is theirs, and they can sell it forever and give you. All right, we got an actual quote there. Maybe we should go theater mode for this. You own the new and original content you create. You agree to give us a non-exclusive, perpetual, irrevocable, worldwide, sub-licensable, royalty-free license to use that content for any purpose. All right. I'm going to do a little control F in here. <laughs> you own... Oh. All right. Page seven. B. Oh, I'm on it, bro. Look, we're there. They use it twice. So is this under the non-commercial license agreement? I'm pretty sure it is. So you know how they said earlier <sighs> that other people will have access to your stuff because it's free and anyone can use it? Just like how you're using their base SRD? I'm pretty sure it's referring to that again. <laughs> because 14B, yeah? it's I know, they're copy-pasting their shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> Most of this stuff is just a copy and paste with some extra phrases and additions added on. Like, even the comments are copy-pasted in some sections. But, again, it's not just them. Anyone can use your content once it's out there. It's free content. Jesus Christ, man. Um... I'm not sure if... On port page 14b... You own the new and original content you create. You agree to give us a non-exclusive, perpetual, irrevocable, worldwide, sub-licensable, royalty-free license to use that content for any purpose. Now, yeah, in a malicious monopoly world where it's 1910 and rights <laughs> don't exist, and hey, I guess the first statement of that thing doesn't matter of you own the new and original content you create um maybe they steal it maybe they pull a machiavellian moment and be like hmm i'll see you in court oh wait oh, you agreed not to sue us in court no matter what hmm. <laughs> like maybe or is it just uh hey you put your shit out there People are going to use it. We're going to use it too. Imagine, imagine, John. They steal Clovisa. Oh, oh big deal. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Use my shit. Like, again, 
Like, what's going to be the worst outcome here? Like, you are a free content creator, and then someone else notices that your content is up for grabs, and they copy-paste it, and then sell it for $750,001? <laughs> it's really not that bad. Thank you, the Bard 78 Drag me in, coward. All right, we're dragging you in. Hell yeah, Corin! Come on, I Corrin. miss you, Corin, also known as Lol Quran. Welcome to the Discord chat, where we are shit talking haters. What's up? And John? Or can we shit talk John here? Uh, yes, no, absolutely. this is a non-John hate I mean, stream. Fuck you. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. No, no hate on John. Then uh, we'll just uh, have principled arguments. You know. Let's That'll be it. for after. So, I mean, the big problem, I think, is that people are worried that it gives them a lot of room to take either, you know, in theory, right, they can take your whole book and publish it, right? <laughs> of course, that's not, that, that's, uh, you know, people aren't going to be okay with that, so they're not going to do that, but... There's what the I think the point is is what they're saying is they can take your stuff, even pieces of your stuff, and just print it, right? Without giving you credit, without any sort of consideration there at all, right? In their own books. Um I'm trying to imagine a world and that happens, right? So if I take everything what you just said for granted, and this is like a slippery sneak in rule where they just disregard the entire, like the rest of their 15 pages of Word document and say, hey, that's a cool book you have there out in the open. I watched your Twitch stream and uh, <laughs> I'm going to take that. It's mine now. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Bard, we also covered that as well, yeah. But I mean, a great example would be Critical Role, and they didn't do that to Critical Role, they literally offered them a deal to literally be a part of Wizards of the Coast. Right, so, I mean, the claim, obviously, right, writing words on paper isn't doing a bad thing, right? Uh -huh. Um, I think people are worried that the terms of it are very one-sided and allow for wizards to do bad things if they want to do bad things. They have the sole right to decide to terminate this at any time, even if you're in the middle of a, you know, multi-million dollar project or whatever, to make something, right? They, for any reason, really, they are the sole arbiter of what breaks the rules. They're, um... There, uh, you know, none of that is necessarily in theory bad if they don't use it badly, right? But uh -huh. it's giving them just an incredible amount more power over everything going on with it than before, right? Which will have a chilling effect, at least on some people. Maybe it's understandable, but. but the, it seems that they only give a shit about anyone who makes a certain amount of money off of it. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty unlikely that Joe Blow's uh, book that he puts out that three people buy for $20 each is going to have to worry about any of these issues, right? So, um. hang on. For example, if I make a custom print jobs for Toyota, Camrys, I'm using their car as a base, they can't sue you. Well, no, they can't sue you, but they can copy your decal and not give you credit, the Red Fox. Um, or, you know, they can take whatever part you're adding to their car, which in this case would be the SRD 5.1. Um, and again, you know, you have to be, like, publishing your work on their website, right? For all this to go down. Of If you are a private citizen who is playing their game and you are not publishing anything on their website, they're, they can't steal from you because they don't know what you're doing, right? But if you publish something 
on their website, like a book or a module or a campaign, you know, a 400 page maps included massive book <laughs> that's worth $10,000 on the GoFundMe Kickstarter. I mean, fuck, if they steal from you, LOL, I guess, but like, they're not going to hit small time creators doing this unless that is small time. Like, so this guy is claiming that everyone is going to get hit by this. No, of and course. You own the new content. Like, it says you own the new and original content you create. So, I don't know. Like, you own it. And if they publish it, they're gonna... I mean, isn't that what you want anyway? You want them to publish your shit? Because, like, then you get your publicity, and then you can start actually trying to make money off of it. Even if you have to give them some at a certain point, now you're being helped out even if you don't want it. Uh, well, uh, I don't know about that, uh, but... Me. They actually can't steal from you. They can only use derivatives of your content, just like they are letting you use derivatives of theirs. I, yeah, exactly. Um... I'm interested to see where it says that, because that was not my understanding of the uh, phraseology that they used. Uh, maybe, but I don't think there is a legal document that blatantly ever says we can steal from you. And I don't think this <laughs> says that either. I, I don't think this says I'm I, as in Wizards of the Coast, am stealing from you, my creator. It's not stealing if you agree to this OGL. Yeah. Which, assumedly, you're doing since you are publishing books on their website. Right. I mean, but that's the terms is that they can use your stuff. Right? Yeah. They, they, they are specifically putting it in there. You, I, to talk from the other side, they're putting it in there because sometimes multiple people have the same ideas around the same time. And if somebody push, push, pushes something on the GM's guild... They don't want to have to go back into their document and try to make sure that there's nothing like that in their book, right? That's why they're actually putting this in. But it absolutely does say, we don't give a fuck, we can publish your stuff. You know what? I'm actually okay with that. I am I think that's super based, in fact. I'm now super shilling for w Wizards of the Coast. Because can fuck. finally get his other books published. If they stole my shit, I'd be happy. Fucking immortalize me, bro. I'm gonna live <laughs> off the infinity. I'm gonna be in the most toxic relationships. I'm gonna join <laughs> Yellow Hat Beanie Boy and be like, Hey, man, <laughs> they stole my shit, too. Let's create a fucking open letter to Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> you own your original content. You own it, i.e. they can't steal it wholesale. They can use your characters, your magic items. They can't take your adventure verbatim based just like how i am stealing the empire within or the evil within two's plot to my next <laughs> D &D again i'd like to see where this this guy is getting that from because that is not my understanding of the wording that they used i don't know get in the twitch chat and fight him yourself because i am not the bard 78 uh who just seems incredibly based to me uh and i'm happy he's here no one read The Witcher author outside of Poland until the game made him mega famous. Temer. Okay. <laughs> the, the other thing that people are worried about is how very focused this is on, um, like like you said, printed books, things like that. Uh, static, they say. Well, I'm not exactly sure from a legal definition what it means to be a static file. Um, I think it just means cannot be actively edited. Um, so, like, it wouldn't be a Google Doc, right, where multiple people can, like, submit changes. It'd be like, this is what we are publishing, get out there, and then you release the PDF. Right, so so I think I one of the things people are worried about is that the OGL 1.0a, or whatever it is, uh. had a much broader sense of what it was to be used for, and people were making things like, uh, editable character sheets and things like that you know automatically populating fields whatever and a lot of that stuff is now not covered anywhere 
uh, question mark, or at least its status is changing, right? Um, and people well, like are those became obsolete. That those sorts of things are no longer covered, no longer can be done in the way that they were before. Well, because they're obsolete now, and like they have D and D Beyond, which literally does that for you. Or fucking Roll20 does it on its own. My fear is another 4E issue, which they scrapped everything but hard books. I don't know, 4E. I'm sorry. They stated pretty clear. I'm just reading comments. Jesus Alden loves his D&D Beyond. <laughs> beyond! <laughs> Love to my Polish... Polish, Polish Damn bros right, and sisters Rumble out Roar. there. I do love D&D Beyond. I don't have to think. I still don't think they're targeting small-time creators. Maybe they can, but... I'm not worried. They stated pretty clearly what they are targeting VTTs and Etsy crap. Well... Well, I mean, you can still ask the question, is it a good thing that they're now saying you can't use OGL content to create a character sheet on a VTT? Like, that seems like I would consider it not a great thing. Yeah, but I don't thinking... know if they say not on a VTT because like they're partnered with all the big ones now. They're partnered with Foundry. They're partnered with Roll20. They're not like... Isn't that a little bit anti-competitive though to partner... Say you have to partner with us to do the VTT thing, and so you're it's saying not... now so, small entrance into the the space can't do You this. shouldn't be having competition selling your product, right? I wouldn't even say it's like anti-competition. They're literally just making deals with people and like it helps both parties, right? D&D &D or Wizards of the Coast makes more money because they're, be, they're funding Roll20 and Roll20 is having a shit ton of games run on it based off of what Wizards of the Coast puts out and Roll20 is just getting funding from Wizards of the Coast now. And they're being said, hey, do what you fucking want with our shit. Just give us a cut of the profit. I mean, listen, I'm not trying to say that Wizards isn't within their rights to do the things they're doing, right? Okay. I'm. The question is whether it's a good thing or a bad thing for the D&D community, right? And I think when you start talking about things like denying people that aren't partnered with wizards into entering the VTT space because the vast majority of VTT is used for D&D, &D, um, then you start, that's the sort of question that you can have, right? Um, no, we're on an anti-jerk wave here where we just hate uh, these people who are <laughs> making stupid React content videos and not being able to read a simple Word document. That's why we're here. I don't give a shit about the greater community of D&D, like, people. Fuck these guys. But these guys have attracted my ire, and now we are pushing back <laughs> against their stupid bullshit of saying, IT'S THE END OF THE WORLD! WIZARDS IS GONNA STEAL EVERYTHING! And it's- they're not. It's just not gonna happen. I, it's just falsehoods. I- That's why we're here, Nick. Fuck you. <laughs> How dare you! <laughs> How dare I try to bring in new and nuanced conversation? You are me. correct. We are React Andes now. Um, speaking of, we're going to continue with our React content. Uh, you can stay in the call if you want. I'm not going to kick you. Cobalt Press Roll20 CR already in the W O Big Wizards. That's what we're calling it now. The new industry. <laughs> Big Wizards! <laughs> They're huge! <laughs> New ants, true. All right, we're going. We're at 220 right now, fellas. Fuck this guy. We're going. Five, no, two, one. You nothing. They can steal it, basically. Two, you have to report everything to Watsy. You have to tell them what you made. You have to tell them what you charge. Okay, pausing at 228. You must report everything. That is not true. It's not, unless you're making over 50000 to $750,000. In which case, you need to give them a financial report to see if your royalties are due.
I mean, product type, price, earnings, you are filling out a form to sell your product on their website. I have read the thing, FX Maximus. We just did it an hour ago. Two hours ago. That's when we started, Chief. There's literally <laughs> just a gap between 50,000 and 750,000. It's true. It's called the intermediate level <laughs> of the tier system within the uh, commercial OGL. Yeah. They just want to see what you're making so that if you're over with 750, you're paying royalties. You're paying royalties over yeah, 700. Yeah, they don't want somebody to say, oh, we didn't do that careful accounting and didn't realize we were over 750K, right? That's the whole point, right? True. All right, we're moving on. 228 in two, one. You have to tell them what you earned. Basically, a ton of red tape for all creators to jump through to make it super easy for Wizards of the Coast of to tape. steal your stuff. Three, red tape. you can only create content if you sign this agreement. If you try to create content without signing, they will- Pausing at 245. They're revoking the old deal. <laughs> no shit, dude. They're <laughs> updating the OGL. By necessity, they should <laughs> revoke the old deal. That oh. seems so logical to me. Why would you let people use the old deer deal, which massively benefits them, versus the new deal where they're trying to protect their IP? So there are some questions here. I did. I haven't read through the whole document. I'm going to be honest. I read through some parts of it, uh, nice. but. I didn't see the part where they said they were revoking the old deal. Um, are they revoking it for everything or just specifically the stuff that's covered in this document? I so I don't even know the old de deal because much like these guys who didn't realize it was time to get mad until the Gizmodo article came out. I didn't read it. I don't know what the fan policy is, but I've read this one. And from what I understand of this fantastic leaked Word document, which Wizards did not publish, uh, they're revoking the old one entirely, and they are using this one now. So, so. if that's the case, then I believe the old, old ODGL um, covered the uh, 3.5 era stuff, right? So if they're completely revoking that... Mm -hmm. And then adding in this new one that seems to only cover the 5e stuff? The 5.1, yeah. Yeah, then what exactly is happening with the, the that third edition stuff? That was my understanding. Again, I also, like you, haven't read it, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, assumedly, it all becomes free use, right? No, if I mean, it's a they still have edition. copyrights for that. I don't know. I... Or it at least allows people to create whatever they want for it without any fear of like. No, I don't think so. They they have they have the I rights. I don't for think that. you They're can sell that agreement, right? So I don't think you can be like, "Hey, I'm selling this." I'm gonna jump back to the AD and D Neil guy, who does this Regal Goblin stuff. Of he took AD and D, he modernized the rules but he's not charging anyone money for it. He's not selling his two-point Neil uh, edition version of Advanced Dungeons and & Dragons. And I think so long as you're doing that, you can still fuck with it. You can still do like 3.5 Nick or whatever, or Lol Quran. <laughs> and they're not going to jump down your throat because you are clearly using... Well, one, you're not even using their OGL non-commercial license, but even if you were using the non-commercial license for it, you're going to be good. Like, it's free stuff. It's, you're not, I mean, you're taking their system, you are modifying it, tweaking it, and as long as you hit, there are four things of make sure you differentiate your stuff from the old stuff, you're good. This includes all income for every product. I assume so, because you're selling your shit on their website. <laughs> if game companies couldn't crack down on Let's Players, I couldn't see how WotC could dip into Critical Role, MCDM. What is MCDM? 
I've seen that term a lot in the past couple, like Matt Colville. Okay. Yeah. I thought, yeah, I always just called him Matt Colville. I never used the initials. Okay. Ads or income. Does that count for regal goblins? Ads are not considered gross, uh, revenue for the purposes of this document. Coffee traveler, any ad money you make by, uh, selling your product or not selling your product, but performing your show for free. It doesn't cover this. This document is purely for stuff you are trying to sell through paywalls, like Patreon subscription services. Like I'm releasing a subclass called the Oath Man of the Paladin. And this Oath Man, if you pay me $15 a month on Patreon, you get access to this PDF. Like, that is when I would fall under the commercial use policy of the OGL, or the oh OGL commercial. I'm not sure if that's true. It's an interesting question of if you're now uh, some big company that wants to use this and make a crap ton of money, now do you just make your PDFs cheaper and add a whole bunch of ads in your PDF? I mean, I mean it, I, uh, if that's how they want to get around it, that's how they get around it, right? That just seems super inefficient. Because, like, <laughs> John doing a Twitch stream making over 750k, if most of that money is coming from ads, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. That's Neither do Twitch. tips or donations. So as long as I am not restricting my product or my uh, content uh, to by, like, a paywall... So you don't need to pay my YouTube any money to watch my YouTube channel, right? I would still be protected under the non-commercial OGL that they are offering. Uh, but again, I'm not creating products to be sold at all, so I would not even sign that, right? That, that like, what are they going to do? <laughs> like, they're going to read my PDFs that I put on my Discord, and they're <laughs> going to be like... <laughs> Well, time to steal all this shit. This looks good to me. And they just like pocket that and like file it under an IP lawyer. Ads that are specifically sold by you to place on a product would count as revenue. Well, um, ads sold by Twitch that play during your streams or not. I'd assume that is the case. For an ad spot in the dock. <laughs> True. You put seven. <laughs> no, you put seven and a half spaces for ads and each is $100,000. <laughs> and then since you don't make a dollar more, you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder about the termination. Um, I'm not sure. What if hat beard guy gets a job at o W O T C, so they terminate you so you can do more stuff with OGL? Um, you know, that's just a whole new can of worms that, okay, that's a cancel culture meta. I don't talk <laughs> about cancel culture. I am on a hate train and an anti jerk wave against guys like this dude, oh. this fucking guy right here. And everyone like him who gets their one lawyer friend into a discord call to read them basic shit because they won't do it themselves. This guy. So, I mean... Again, it's, it's probably <laughs> unlikely to happen that someone just bans your crap because they hate you, right? Very unlikely to happen because there'd be community pushback, right? But that doesn't mean necessarily that it's a good thing for them to have it in their, uh, in their document that they're the sole decider, right? No, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. True. I don't know. WotC is pretty aggressive with their subcontractors. Look, I've seen the horrors of Games Workshop firsthand, guys. Those <laughs> guys. And Nintendo is even worse than Games Workshop. I don't know if any of you guys realize just how much of a hard ass Nintendo gets. But holy fuck, this is nothing compared to them. Uh, they're still being super charitable. They're still letting people make money, and they are clearly targeting a certain group of people who are using their product to get more money than everyone else, right? To the point where they are actively using their product to compete with the guys making their product. If that sentence made sense, fuck, it probably didn't. Dude, if I remember right, Nintendo even fucking got pissed pissy about Sony making the PSP. 
the reason the PSP had discs is because Nintendo had like fucking claimed the ability to have chips, those little uh, DS cartridges. So the Red Fox is the D20. No. So you can go. I think there is an actual website where it will tell you uh, 5E Wizards SRD system reference document D&D. So this is what they are referring to. Um, Wow. Okay. I agree. (laughs) So. Whatever is in this, I assume, is what they mean by their system reference document or their SRD. I could be completely wrong. Um, I'm not, uh, I don't fucking know. I'm just using basic reading comprehension to tell everyone that this guy is a fear-mongering dick weasel who needs to chill (laughs) the fuck out. And uh, we're going to upload this video to YouTube and make an easy 6K views, guys. Come on. (laughs) Finally. Finally, John makes over a thousand. Let's do it. All right, we're restarting at 2.45 in five, four, three. We'll sue you. Okay, this is where it gets really messed up, and and I want to stress this. Wizards planned to release this document on January 4th, with the deadline to sign Mm -hmm. being January the 13th. They gave creators one week to sign up to this awful deal, or their business was over. They could not publish again without being sued. There are creators out there whose entire livelihoods are based around making D&D content. Okay. So, I don't know where he gets that. I don't know who he heard that from, or if that is completely made up. This document that we read, the whole fucking leaked document, says... Nothing about the dates except for January 13th, 2023. And then a year after, they make reference to a year after in the document. It doesn't say when this was supposed to be released. And since it was leaked, I assume something went horribly wrong then. Like, was this supposed to actually come out in like December or like? Something happened to the point where this got circulated, but it is incomplete, right? This is not a definite work. So, also people can sign at any time. Yeah, anyone can sign up for this. Um, so, I I don't... I don't know, Coffee. I, I don't know. Who was sued over missing the deadline? Well, no one right now. You have to I sign mean, in, yeah, four days is, <laughs> like... <laughs> well, in the video, he said it was put out on the 4th to sign, be signed by the 13th. No, but it was apparently supposed to be put out on the 4th. Okay. But we're on the 9th now, and this was a leaked document, so I'm not sure where he well, got that from. we it, read said the 13th is when it's, like quote-unquote release right yeah well that's a working (laughs) like date right that's not the real date because this was not released right this was leaked to the public (laughs) so clearly they were they would have had to update that uh again i don't know about copyright law but i'm told that you need to give someone at least 30 days notice to like do stuff the original declaration was before the 21st of December. D&D Beyond mentions on their site. Uh, okay. Then where'd this That's guy get the 4th in January? Though. Is my question. Um, um, I think there were some uh, uh, NDAs um, for people that were distributed some information regarding it. I don't know exactly the whole details that expired on the 4th. Okay. So there was a lot more confirmation of things going on around that uh, on the floor. I that that, okay. that is my that makes more sense. But if that was like one D and D non disclosure agreements for like play testing their <laughs> game, that's still not an updated OGL, right? I think it was specifically to do with this OGL stuff. I again, oh. I only have a little bit of information. On it. Well, you yeah, vaguely thought. <clears throat> All right. Back to the video. Man, we got a nice looking Dritz there. Look at him. He's got a weird hand on his neck. All right, we're starting. Two, <laughs> one. 
Wizards essentially said you have one week to agree to this disgustingly, uh, offensively bad deal for you. Disgusting and if you offensive. don't sign, you can't <laughs> make stuff. It's your choice, but if you want to be able to feed your kids and pay your mortgage, you probably better sign. Pay you? your mortgage, Most feed your DM kids. Most creators aren't rich. They're just normal... $750,000, by the way, this for royalties. This deal was designed to destroy <laughs> them or force them to give everything to Wizards. But don't... Destroy them or give Not everything to wizards. So again, they just want royalties for people who make more than seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in an, a year of selling products on their website. Oh, uh, here's termination. Uh, That's what bi businesses hold the right to do. That don't they? Yeah. Unless it's under explicit contract that says you have this much time. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, I don't even know what to say to this. Because, like, intuitively, who is, like, fleshing out their entire livelihood off of the D&D &D Beyond marketplace <laughs> for selling books? Yeah, probably only really a handful of people, eh? Barely. But apparently it's all... This is a, like, existential threat to all content creators, is what this guy says. And they'll steal everything from you. <laughs> and you want to know what's really funny? Even though he's saying all of this, he's going to continue making D&D &D content. He's going to keep doing all the shit he was doing, even after he probably will sign this. Maybe. Maybe he does. I mean, is he even making anything that would be covered by it? Probably. Probably not. I think no. it said earlier he makes some kind of comic. You can now maintain your own John Deere equipment based. <laughs> Don't worry, it gets right. so well, much worse. Well, comic wouldn't be covered Four. by this, right? Wizards can change anything about this new OGL at any time. I and mean, they only need if it's to based off the SRD, it notice. would be. All right, point uh, four. They can change their OGL. This was covered in his point three, where they changed their OGL. <laughs> <laughs> 30 days notice seems to be like the standard, like legal standard of updating things. Uh, they do, however, in the actual leak, make reference to uh, giving people like a full year, like content creators a uh, year. Um... Nope, nope, nope. I'd have to actually hunt it down. Um, so, arguing with Alden some more. Fuck my you. understanding <laughs> is that uh, <clears throat> only things that would be used as a role-playing game are actually covered under this now, right? So you can't even make your own D&D-based book using... SRD content, right? Which, I mean, I think that's totally reasonable, but. I'm sorry. Wait, was that arguing me? You were saying that this would cover his uh, comic, which it does not, right? Well, I'm saying that's only if it, like, like you said, if it was using the SRD material, right? Well, not for, like, a comic, right? It would have to be a role playing game yeah. thing. Intended mm. to use his role playing game to be covered. <laughs> I see. So it makes clear mention of what covers like uh, non commercial and commercial. So in the non commercial license, you have to have four stipulations to be covered under it. And we can go through them one more time if you guys want. But as we said earlier, the four stipulations are it qualifies as a covered works. Uh, as defined in section IB or 1B, whatever you want to call it, it contains both licensed content, which is the SRD and basic SRD shit of 5.1, and your content, which is your extra stuff, and it doesn't contain unlicensed content such as, uh, or pub, uh, I think it was published works that have or will be released by Wizards of the Coast. Um, so you can't do, like, a graphic novel of Eberron, even if it has your original character in it. Um, because, you know, you're using their It's shit. still their IP. Uh-huh. So I'm sure, like, 
uh, the guys who are doing the Critical Role show, the Vox Machina stuff, they're not even going to have anything to do with this at all. Because they're just like animating stories that happened in like a Twitch live stream. So again, Critical Role has nothing to do with this. And I know that seems like a weird segue, but I was really hating on a guy who was at the top of this YouTube feed for a little while ago. Uh, you're just going to have th this guy, this piece of shit. He has brought <laughs> Critical Role up every single time. I watched like half of this video on my own while just getting more and more upset. Um <laughs> And it's just like every time, like critical role, critical role, critical role. It's like, okay, dude, yeah. we get it. I You're mean, just saying that critical for the role is going to have their own special license for. They are, they There's have to already have it right? because they're um, aren't they partnered? They're working hand in hand. I don't know if it's an actual partnership, but fucking seems like it. If the only people who have published work well. I mean, they're fucking From supported by D and D Beyond. They have to be have like some deal, right? There's no way they don't. All right, let's try to get through at least another minute of this before we head on <laughs> out. Ah, oh, it's getting we're getting long, and someone's inviting me to play fucking not dark and darker, Deep Rock Galactic. Fuck. All right, here we go. Two one. So even if you signed it and did everything right, they could still just change it later and completely fuck you over. Five, and now we're getting to the good stuff. Wizards can terminate your contract at any time for any reason. Yes, if you piss wizards off, like for example, by making a video just like this one, they can say you're out. They All right. No, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> your video is not covered at all in their thing in their leaked document at all it's not it's it's not in the document it's not covered by it it just isn't like they mention it they mention videos but you're not selling anything so like i'm i'm accessing this guy's youtube without paying for anything that's why i'm making fun of him right now wizards isn't going to go over to YouTube and be like, you need to take this video down right the fuck now. He's talking about D&D &D and that's related to my company. I'm going to fucking kill him. Big Wizard isn't going to do it. He's not. Big Wizard. Yeah, Big Wizard the character. The John Dungeon Master character. Wizards can feel free to use that one. You can steal that one, bud. I'll sign your OGL. There you go. You now have Big Wizard, your new mascot. <laughs> It's, it's not going to happen. And they give you explicit instructions of what will qualify you for termination. And it's mostly related to doing xenophobia and racism and being anti-trans and their entire, not methos, uh, ethos about running their business. They don't want you to make your racist frog sub race and publish it <laughs> on their website. They don't. <laughs> yeah, Pathos, I mean, maybe. the the only problem with that, right, is that they're the sole they get the sole decision of what that means, right? Yeah, just like Twitter, just like Twitch, just like YouTube, everyone it's gets it. right as a fucking company, corporation, whatever you want to call it. I think it's under the First what Amendment. Their, is their beliefs? <laughs> <laughs> so if you make your racist frog and you try to sell it through a paywall, they can terminate you. Like, all right, well, well, hopefully not you specifically, but your <laughs> book, your module, your little thing. This and it's going to murk you. They have to arbitrate their own products and who are connected to them. So defend your IP. Good job, wizards. Woo. I'm happy for him. Oh, good on him. Wild. All right. Uh, we're going to move on. We're times two in this. All right. Two, one. They have this clause which states they can kick you for any offensive materials included oh, in your warp speed that sounds now. kind of sensible, right? Except this word <laughs> is just camouflage because in reality, wizards themselves are the ones who decide what is and isn't offensive so they can kick you for anything they want. So All if right, I piss them off, they can look through 5. my content and say, look, this person <laughs> race has a subrace who live in a polyamorous society and we find that offensive. Polyamory is contrary to Wizards of the Coast's stance on the sanctity of marriage or whatever. Your business is over. This is just an example and yes, it sounds crazy because it is. It's not your business. It's your one content. Do. And most importantly, if Wizards of the Coast abuse this, that creator can't sue them. 
because by signing this document, you waive your rights to take legal action against Wizards of the Coast. The hey, guess what? Every single company the does. The they can do whatever they put in a thing that says you can't sue them. Thing back. This is an abusive level of coercion to hang over people's heads. Who is going to stand up to Wizards of the Coast if they can just hold the thread of ending your business and putting your family on the streets if they don't like you? Putting your family on the streets. Twenty-five percent of anything. Any okay. I don't know how much this guy is making, but when he put this up, I was truly suspicious. If you are going to be kicked out onto the streets after you make $750,000 a year, I've got questions, okay? <laughs> I've got serious questions for you, all right? How much money are you spending every month? Maybe we should downsize your fucking mansion that you're living in. <laughs> if you're spending, you know, $30,000 a month. <laughs> like, <laughs> I maybe I'm just too poor to value $750,000 a year. But that's being a multimillionaire in like two years. <laughs> no one's making this much money. And... If this YouTuber is, and he's making all this money on YouTube, Wizards isn't getting in his way. <laughs> it's not. It's just not doing it. <laughs> so, so, like, I can't even imagine what that kind of money would look like. I couldn't even spend that much money. I think that was a whole arc in Breaking Bad, in fact. <laughs> Where they were like, how do we get rid of all this money? We're just going to give it to Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> we're going to fucking violate their thing. They, Scrooge McDuck is going to come over. <laughs> like, this is fucking laughable. Like, this guy's privilege is just fucking showing. Clear as day. <laughs> all right. Let's end this video and be done. Any business earns above $750,000 per year, or 20% if that money comes from Kickstarter. Now, this might not sound too relevant, but it is. Firstly, it kills all big Kickstarters. They are just not profitable enough to justify this type of gouging, but that is only the start. Remember, wizards can change this contract at any time, so once you've signed up... Guys, wh like, what was the biggest Kickstarter for a D&D &D module or book? Was it over $750,000? Like, does it, question. what is the biggest Kickstarter book that requires $750,001? And then a quarter after each of those dollars ever after... It's no longer viable as a business. I would love a single example. Like, bring me a book. What was Matt Colville's, like, Strongholds and Followers book? How much did that take to get off the ground? And if it was sub, I, it had to have been more than 10000 But it could not have been three quarters of a million dollars. I, I don't buy it. 25% of 750 is what? Like so 187,000? So followers made or had pledged 2,121,000. 2 million. 2 million. Okay. How much of that was necessary to run? Like, what was their first goal? Good question. So... If it was like, hey, we can do this for like 100k, and then like everyone rushed to support it, that's great. Yeah. So that's they're fantastic. 600k was the goal. Okay. N no, there's no way. Their first stretch goal was what, yeah, 90K. 2 million pledged of 600k goal. They probably upped that because their first stretch goal was at 90k. Hmm. Okay. So, so yeah. if someone's you're, super you're totally popular right. and people rush to it and be like, make us more, make us more, make us more. Okay. But that's still nothing. They've now exceeded that 10 times, 20 times, if it's 60K and they made 2 million off of a Kickstarter. 
But you know what? That two million Why don't you throw some it? of that back to the guys who are letting you make millions of dollars? I think you're going to be okay, Matt Colville. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maybe. I mean, I don't think he's getting the information you asked for. No, you're great, Nick. You're fantastic. You're not my enemy. No one's my enemy. Mm. Except the guy in the hat. Fuck you, guy in the hat. <laughs> Unbelievable. Guys wearing hats indoors. Unbelievable. No, could come Show me your greasy hair. Of everything anyone earns Temmer, over 20, we started. Americans would kill for $2 million. A year. Remember, you can't sue them, and they can change it at any time. This part of the clause is so obviously spiteful. Wizards of the Coast are a billion-dollar company. They're spiteful they now. Like, in terms of their bottom line, they don't care about getting an extra $100,000 here or there. They really they don't, don't care. care. This only exists to take a big but, chunk out of the creators who are making great D&D Okay. They damn well know. So this guy just claimed wizards don't actually care about the money. Now they want to spite creators. <laughs> That's their goal now. It's no longer about protecting their IP. It's no longer about getting some kickback from the people who are making a lot of money off their shit. It's because they hate creators. <laughs> I don't buy it. He's a fear monger. He's just being upset he's spaghetti. This only matters for people making great content. Like, I hate creators too. Yeah, I hate myself more so than anyone else, <laughs> lol Quran. Uh, I think Watsy has run out of ideas, so now they just want to steal everyone else's. I also do not trust the big wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they you can hire any wizards? dumb fuck off the street and be I like, I, I will you give you seven. No, you can't trust a wizard. <laughs> he just shit on everyone and doesn't make 750. They just aren't great creators. Coffee Traveler is based the opposite of cringe. Oh my god. All right. Here we go. The Kickstarters, like Heliana's Guide and Fool's Gold and Eldritch Hunt, are leagues better than anything Wizards of the Coast have released in years. So, if the community are banding okay. together and making you look bad by releasing amazing stuff, what do you do? Well, you just change okay. the licensing agreements and completely screw them. <laughs> oh, and you can steal their book as well, obviously, and then just sell it yourself, and then terminate their contract and put them out of business. Oh, yeah, and they can't sue you for it. Amazing. But the drama just goes on and on. Wizards of the Coast have already been threatened with a lawsuit over the proposed changes to the OGL. The original creator of the OGL has come out and said, We made this with the belief and the intent that it would last forever. And Okay. I don't know about lawsuits, all right? I'm not the lawman. I'm not a lawyer. But if some dumb fuck from 20 years ago comes up and sues me for changing a <laughs> thing that he is no longer a part of, you know, I'm going to walk away. Like, that's I a think joke. Those were two separate uh, comments there. I don't think that's the guy that's suing Oh, okay. So that's he's just saying this. He's like, oh, he's, he's just rapid firing out bullshit. He's virtue you know? signaling. Got it. <laughs> My public opinion is that Hasbro does not have the power to deauthorize a version of the OGL. You're right. It's called updating it, dumb fuck. <laughs> that had been a power that we wanted to reserve for Hasbro. We would have enumerated it in the license. I'm on record numerous places in email and blogs and interviews saying that the license could never be revoked. So, well, it's yeah, not a part of Wizards. Though. Yeah. What's up, Nick? Hit me up. The one thing I guess that's been a fairly recent change since the OGL uh, was originally published is that um, the wording that you had to put in there for it to be irrevocable, they, they now like... If you say indefinite but not irrevocable, it no longer ir or they've decided that doesn't count as being irrevocable. So that's fairly recent case law, as I understand it. So there may be some like real intent things going on here where it was written one way and uh -huh. then with a certain intent. And then, you know, the case law around the way it was written changed the way that you would read it. Well, uh, see if their OGL was uh, <laughs> adapted, then it couldn't be revoked, right? And <laughs> there you go. Way, we figured it out, John. We fucking I'm figured it out. Though, right? Look at that. They made a fucky wucky, and uh, I guess they're paying for it from Big Wizard himself. <laughs> it's like I have found the loophole I needed to destroy all creators. <laughs> 
Uh, that's what it is. How many Warhammer games are there in the past five years and yet almost zero D&D games? Uh, I don't know what that point's supposed to mean because I fucking know Games Workshop on record uh, takes apart their IPs piecemeal and sells them to companies to test them to see if they're trustworthy or not to do a bigger game. So in the case of Sega, they did not give rights to certain races and factions within the Warhammer fantasy game. So they could only work with the old world stuff in the first game. And after proving their success, the second game was greenlit. And then the third game came along right after. So Games Workshop has a very different business model than Wizards of the Coast, who now wish to protect their IP from, and I quote, bad actors and fund their major competitors. Um, I do have a massive Warhammer addiction. I am a hated fan of the series because I hate the games. I hate the tabletops, but my God, do I just have a shit ton of minis behind me that are unpainted, which I'll never bring <laughs> to a local games workshop uh, or Warhammer store, as they're called now, to face off against my fellow neckbeards. Um, <laughs> companies are allowed to have different business models. They're allowed to update their licensing, however that appears. And if Wizards wants to update their OGL and there's nothing stopping them, by God, they should do it. it, because the last thing I want to see is Soldier Boy doing a Nintendo thing, but with Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> that is a very weird reference that I just made, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows about the Soldier Boy ripping off Nintendo and trying to pirate and self <laughs> <laughs> shitty <laughs> versions of a Nintendo uh, DS, but he did that shit, and that was funny as fuck. You, <laughs> yep, Soldier Boy. Look it up. It's one of the one things I remembered from college. <laughs> uh, we promised that it would last forever. People are boycotting Wizards of the Coast. Tons of creators are just walking away from D and D altogether. It is hell on earth right now. This has honestly been hell the most on earth. stressful and difficult Everyone's time walking to be away. a content creator that I've ever lived through. It's not just the financial security, although yes, that is terrifying. It is the knowledge that all the love and the work that I put into the magazine and on Patreon across the last year is just going to get funneled right into this greedy, shitty, coercive company. I've had content creator friends contact me in yeah, tears, worrying how they're going to feed their kids. And for all that terror and cruelty <laughs> and greed. <laughs> Bro, if you can't feed your kids with $750,000 a year, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I This guy is fucking lost in the sauce. Like uh, His kids only eat activated uranium. So. Apparently. <laughs> DMD Keemstar. I guess so, Hobby Lobby 9. I guess so. Um... <laughs> To be fair, it's 750k revenue. It's true. <laughs> he could have other sources of revenue, true. <laughs> he, he might be only able when to feed to himself. Pay someone else to make his comic for him, you know? Like <laughs> True. <laughs> his fucking magazine for D&D. &D. I guess it's sold on the D&D &D Beyond store now, and he has to... He's just upset he's got to do, like, four things, like report his earnings. Oh, pay a royalty of 25% <laughs> after $750,000. Fuck this guy. Holy shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that's it for the hate stream. Uh, <laughs> we will be uploading this to YouTube to try to shit down people's throats. Uh, so sorry for the people who are just joining in or tuning in. We're almost on fucking three hours now. Um, but yeah, you know. And if we get some more content to hate on more people and just do anti-jerk ones, uh, we'll keep doing it. Big thanks to the Red Fox 64 who showed up and was a good actor and not a piece of shit. Uh, as well as, where's that bard guy? I want to call you out specifically. You're a cool one. You're a real one, dude. The bard 78, you're great. Uh... To the few people who just posted one thing and told me to fuck off, go fuck yourself. You're a piece of shit and I hate you. And you can join my Discord and we can argue about how much I hate you and why people shouldn't wear hats indoors. Uh, <laughs> Alden, Corin, if you want to say anything, go ahead and shout it out. All right.
Guys, we're out of here. <laughs> Good one. Don't die. We'll see you maybe in the next one. Woo.